which chance do you think the current Republican candidate likely to have for the eventual presidential election? It's very early to say. Um, he has uh, just been chosen by his own uh, party uh, to um, gather and, and, and woo all the uh, right and uh, right extreme and maybe center right electorate. So it's um, very difficult to say in the absence of a left-wing candidate. And we know, of course, that uh, Marine Le Pen will be running. But uh, we know that it's going to be a three-party um, election that will be fought next year. Mm. Uh, Professor Smith, what do mm. you think? I think that the, one of the problems that Fillon has uh, is that the centre-right will respond. It's interesting that you, you talked about this election as an election of a centre-right candidate, but in fact there is a centre that will not recognise Fillon really as being its candidate and probably François Bayrou, who sees himself as the natural candidate of the centre, who would not have stood if Alain Juppé had been elected. François Bayrou will probably stand and there is certainly a centre ground on the right in France that uh, will want to have its say, will want to mm. have its candidate and that could prove a very interesting uh, contest in the first round. But the question is, uh, Ms. Conway Mouret, does the centre still matter anymore given the going to the right kind of tendency that we see in elections throughout the world? Yes, it, it does matter because um, we, we do have a polarized um, um, political system where we do hear a lot about the extremes, uh, the extreme right and the extreme left. And then we have uh, the Socialist Party and the Republican Party. And then we have this cent center, uh, this electorate that uh, is conservative, uh, that does believe in, in the traditional Republican values, uh, Republican with the, 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 the way the French uh, understand mm. the term. And it is within that electorate that uh, the two part, well, the right and the left have to, uh, to seek uh, voters because they know uh, already that um, the left represents about 30%, the yeah. right 30%, the extreme right 30%. And it's really this electorate that makes the difference if uh, they can woo them. Mm. But the thing is, what do the center want? That's the question, because this specific election, Mr. Fillon, as a matter, could want as the party's candidate is because he's advocating about pride, about epic, about identity mm -hmm. of friends. Uh, that is certainly not necessarily what the center has used to uh, label themselves. But uh, Mr. Tui here in Beijing, what do you make of this current result so far? Yes. Also, you know, so far, indeed, I, I think that uh, Mr. Feiyong uh, uh, won, uh, how to say, smoothly than we expected. So I think uh, uh, so far it's uh, good news for, for, for those people who are worried, worrying about this, um, you know, uh, uh, defeat of this uh, you know, mainstream politicians. But of course, just like you mentioned now, we have to recognize the situation is no matter the left, right, and the far right, mm. it looks like all of these uh, parties, their principles, their commitment already has been shaped by a kind of a populism mm. uh, uh, issue. For example, just like you mentioned, identity issue or some mm. um, Immigration you know, refugee issue. or migration issue or some... Uh, you know, European Union issue, everything. So that's interesting because uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Convey Mouret, in the campaign, Mr. Fillon talking about several things. One is reform the labor standards that might not necessarily please the blue collar workers and the labor unions. And then he talked about, let's cut the taxes. Well, the rich are gonna be a little bit happy about that. Mm. And then you also talk about, let's reestablish our identity. And at the same time, to cut down on immigrants, particularly those mm. from the Muslim countries. So it seems to be a mixture of groups that he's trying to please. The question is, can he do that? Can candidates in today's France be able to please everybody? Ms. Kamwe Mouhey. Well, mm, very good question. Um, 
you have to remember that um, we're just out of the primary, <laughs> and the primary was uh, fought uh, towards the one electorate, that is the right-wing electorate. So that's the one that had to be pleased and uh, uh, be called to the polls. Uh, so therefore, mm. there were some questions on the economy, and Monsieur Fillon is possibly the candidate that has the most elaborate program that was very clear-cut from the start as to what he wanted to propose. But then he was within the party where Nicolas Sarkozy was the candidate mm. that was running after the uh, right extreme uh, vote, and that's based on identity, migration, and whatever. So Monsieur Fillon obviously had to try to catch this uh, electorate as well, and that's why he went maybe on, on other grounds than the ones that he had initially initiated with it, his, his, his own project. But you have to remember that all these candidates were within the one party. Right. Um, so, of course, they, they do have uh, what each of the candidates put into the program, the right-wing program, in order to catch uh, a certain part of the electorate. Philippe Bolle said... More sensitive to economic issues or social issues or identity, but right. that, that was very much the, um, the theme said. that Nicolas Sarkozy was concentrating on. Okay, beautifully said, as I said earlier, but the question is, campaign rhetoric, when it comes to implementation, of course, is going to be a very different matter. So, uh, with the U.S. presidential election and Mr. Donald Trump uh, as a presidence, uh, Professor Smith, what do you think the French voters, how much are they going to believe in what the candidates say, and how much are they going to buy into the words? Well, it depends not only whether they believe it or whether they want to go along with it. Mm. Because in 2007, you had two candidates, Nicolas Sarkozy and Ségolène Royal, who talked about nothing but change. The French word is rupture, nothing but change <laughs> with the past, both of them in very different ways. Here you have one candidate who's talking a lot about change, and yet what's going to be delivered? Already the trade unions are talking about... Uh, a difficult uh, process um, and uh, as our colleague uh, in from the French Senate said that there's a great deal of, of difference between one party's potential candidate who's now their candidate and actually what his program will be there will be negotiations between him and other figures uh, on the right and the center right and he mm. may it'll be very interesting to see how much of his program for winning the primary actually remains in place come next April, May. Um, but that's, you know, th the problem with the French is at, at the moment they talk, when you talk to ordinary French people, they want change, but nobody's really, no, nobody really knows what that means, or they, they'll sign up for certain things. And as right. you yourself are saying, you know, they'll buy, they'll buy bits of it, but they don't want to buy the whole package necessarily. Mm. Well, the UK, I have to say, pretty much knows what they want so in your referendum about the Brexit. So I, I don't know whether the French are really have a very clear idea of what they want. Uh, uh, Miss uh, Conway Moré, that's why I want to come back to you. There are two things going on right now. One is the internal politics and the economy of the French, your own country. The other is France's relations with the EU and also with the rest of the world that we should all examine at the same time. So what do you make of exactly what the French want? If I could generally like that, generalize like that, particularly when you see the rise of populism elsewhere in the world, you see the U.S. Uh, election, you also see some of the right-wing tendency in other European capitals as well with the elections coming up there. This is a long question, but I really want you to help us understand what is the social trend while you smell the air in Paris? Well, um, France is not immune to what's happening in the rest of the world. There is, um, there is a, a, a deeper gap between the urban and rural populations now. Um, um, there is a, a fear of globalization where people uh, feel that um, time and space is escaping them, that um, everything is, is going really, really fast. And, and indeed, the polls, I mean, François Fillon, uh, uh, mm. two months ago was uh, totally unknown and now he has actually won uh, the primary. Mm. So um, there is a very volatile um, uh, kind of uh, well, <laughs> feeling in the population where what is wanted today can be different uh, in a month's time. 
Um, I think all of that is linked to the social networks where people are linked constantly to what's happening and their, you know, their mind can be changed on, a, uh, on an issue simply because they'll be reading up in the social networks all the different types of things and, and uh, may actually uh, take some distance with the official uh, talks. So um, what the French want is uh, very difficult to say. I think yeah. what they want is to be reassured to be reassured that um, they can continue to live in peace, which is one of the most important thing, um, that uh, globalization is not somehow putting pressure in, in making you know, their children not less, or yeah. less well off than, than the parents would have been. They want to, to be reassured that the educational system will actually prepare the youth to get a job. Um, that um, you know, um, migration will be controlled. Mm. Um, that terrorism will be under control, mm. right. and and so they want all of these things at the same time. But I think you know we're, we live more and more in an individualist um, uh, society, and that people are looking after themselves and what is good for them. Um, you know, in terms of their accommodation, their job, the schools for their children, the health care, and so on. Um, they want all of that as a package, and they're not maybe as tolerant than they was uh, they, that they were in the past. Mm. Mr. Tsui here in Beijing, we heard uh, what the other two panelists said to help us to understand. The question is, will they be able to do that? I mean, at this uh, stage, there's a transformation of the economies going on around the world. There's mm -hmm. failure of doing that in many countries. Uh, mm -hmm. France is not necessarily an exception. And meanwhile, you see the divide after the U.S. presidential election within the country, the huge division there yeah. about on all the issues. So are we going to see another example of that with the French election coming up? Mm -hmm. Yes, certainly. I think before, we, uh, before I give a response to your question, I just want to have some very briefly uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, answer uh, to this um, previous question about what what it does uh, French Go watch. ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think first we, we can find out from uh, both of the policies from Mr. Fillon and uh, uh, Maria Le Pen, we can find out firstly a kind of uh, nationalism, which means that uh, no matter Mr. Fillon and uh, Maria Le Pen, always they want to polish the, uh, uh, the name of France mm. from the shade, uh, shadow of the uh, European Union, from the sh uh, shadow of the uh, uh, United States, like that. And also uh, for your question, certainly I think that uh, it is uh, uh, very, very uh, uh, possible for uh, France, once they are, uh, will be winner for an election, no matter Mr. Fillon and uh, Le Pen, because so far we can find out, just like uh, Madame from France mentioned, a very, very deep gap uh, among right. the societies between the workers, between, between the workers and the uh, employer, and between those people who won something from the globalization and somebody who mm. lost something from it. So we can find, yes, it will be very, very serious question for both two uh, right. candidates. One of the things that we have to mention to uh, Professor Smith uh, is that in France, there has been generations of uh, immigrants coming from Muslim countries. And uh, this time, uh, Mr. Fillon, during his campaign, has been talking about reduce the number of the immigrants, particularly from the Muslim countries against Islamism. So we all understand the European continent now is not immune mm -hmm. to terrorism anymore. We are not suggesting anything that religion is necessarily linked to terrorism. But the question is, how are we going to look at no. promises like this by the candidates? And how much will promises like this by the presidential candidates eventually influence the social beliefs inside the country. Well, I think that's a very good question. Of course, again, we've been here before. Nicolas Sarkozy in 2007 camped really on the territory of Marine Le Pen's father, Jean-Marie Le Pen, in 2007 and talked about limiting immigration and stole votes from him as a consequence. And I think that that's what Fillon is doing, that there's a lot of rhetoric here. Uh, whether he can really introduce meaningful controls on particular kinds of immigration into France is unknowable, but certainly he will, he will use that rhetoric in order to steal 
votes because that's what he's essentially doing. He's doing what Sarkozy did before. I mean, there is a lot of, of crossover between the two men just because it, there, there is an issue of personality behind the rejection of Sarkozy. Mm. But there's a lot of, a lot of policy uh, identification between the two. Now, whether he can actually deliver uh, on those kinds of controls is, is all, it's not immaterial, but it will be a way in which he will try to steal, and we've seen this already, that he will try to steal some of that, that terrain from uh, right. Marine Le Pen. And her problem that she has is that she's now dealing with, a, with an opponent on the right that she wasn't expecting. But, you know, all of these is not necessarily all about tactics. It is also something about the strategies, the strategy of the country and the vision of a country, I guess. Uh, uh, therefore, let me come back to you, Ms. Conway mm -hmm. Mouhe. That is, yes. you see the U.S. presidential election. You see radical campaigns by Mr. Trump. And you also see a trend against the quote-unquote political correctness. What political correctness have is the negativity, but at the same time, it has been a theory in which the country believes in when it comes to their value system. So what about the French election? Are we going to see similar phenomena? Like what's going on inside the United States? Can France be immune to that trend? Ms. Yes. that France can be immune. Um, France has always had this tradition to think universal and uh, to have, uh, I, I suppose, this um, vision, uh, you know, with the universal human rights and so on, uh, to feel that it had a role to play. So it's not um, easy today to uh, sell a program to an electorate uh, closing down borders and, and so on. And if Marine Le Pen so far has been doing so well, it's because uh, she has articulated a very clear discourse as to what she was going to do. Mm. And people may not have um, liked what she was saying, except that she was the only one to articulate something that was solid, that um, could um, you know, convince them. Uh, and also because um, France has never been led by a far-right um, regime. So uh, people, you know, some people said, well, let's try them. And then if we don't like them, well, you know, we will reject them. But I think it's, it's far more serious now that people could be reassured to see a candidate on the right that mm -hmm. is conservative, uh, that does not, that right. does not uh, want to close borders, that does not want to reject the euro and, uh, and, and pull out of the EU and so on. So this uh, conservative, uh, upper class, uh, right wing electorate uh, that would have voted for Marine Le Pen okay. uh, in the absence of a candidate that would go along what they believe in um, would probably go towards um, this candidate. I see. Mr. Trey, come back to you. In the United States, we still do this comparison. Mm -hmm. It is not Republican that the one they have elected, but rather a populist nationalist, right. uh, which is uh, what Mr. Trump has been trying to be during his campaign. Yeah. So are we going to see similar phenomena mm -hmm. in France? Are we going to see people in their elections? Let's try this once. Let's try this once, and let's try this once. And if every country that we're seeing during their election in the next year do try it once. What does that really mean? Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. We can find out some uh, similarities uh, between the uh, uh, two sides of the transatlantic say. Because I think uh, uh, now we need to understand the very, very simple uh, realities. Why the populism or this uh, far right wing uh, political uh, figures got so, many, uh, so much support from uh, average people? Right. The simple uh, uh, reality is most of the people they are not satisfied with the current situation. They are not uh, satisfied with this uh, establishment mm. politics or parties. And also, just like uh, uh, the mother mentioned, that uh, compared with the traditional uh, political elite, I think those uh, far-right uh, uh, political figures, they are good at it too. Uh, you know, to but the question really yeah, is, what does that support? mean if everybody tries it once? If yes. every country tries it once? Are we, as a world, because going they, to the far right? Because they don't right? have a very clear direction for future. They just uh, want to try. Because they want to have maybe an unclear direction right. is good, is better than the current situation. Let me put the same question very briefly to Professor Smith as well. This is the first election we are going to see. It's already been quite heated, but there are more to come, including in Germany. Uh, so what do you think, sir, this trend? Is it going to spread even further? Mm -hmm. What would that mean for Europe? 
briefly. <clears throat> well, I, I see no reason why it shouldn't, why it shouldn't spread. Um, in many ways, actually, France has led the way. We, we're kind of seeing Marine Le Pen as being a new phenomenon, but she's been, in many ways, in France, she's already the story, the political story, mm. if we look at last year's regional elections. But, you know, populist right-wing movements are, are gaining ground everywhere. Uh, actually, in, in Britain, they're not doing quite so well because the establishment has kind of held them at arm's length. But with Angela Merkel facing elections next year, we've seen things happening in Greece, and... There's going to be a very interesting, uh, there are going to be interesting developments in Italy with the referendum there. That's right. So, you know, we're all kind of holding our breath and looking very closely at, at what's happening. I see. Populism's not just of the right, but of the left, of course, because as well in France, there is this, this left-wing candidate called Mélenchon, who his performance will be interesting to watch as well.